So, hey everybody, I just wanted to get this information in your hands because so many people are confused when they get on the internet, they don't know where to start, and I have a solution for that. I'm Jennifer and I organize the internet. So, everybody knows there's shiny object syndrome, there's a lot of distractions, there's a lot of gurus out there on the web telling you to do one thing or another, and while each one of those pieces might be true or each one of those courses or methods might be true, they truly all fit into a five step process from start to finish. And as you can see right here, it's a little bit blurry. These are not final images, but um, we're working through this. The five phases are research, planning, building, traffic, and reports. And we're gonna go through this. Um, everything that you see up here in the, in the question mark area can fit into one of those, those five phases and, and they just work together nicely. So let's jump into something we've all heard about, keyword research. Here's a landscaping company, okay? And in the research phase, you do multiple things, but let's just pick out one to go through. Keyword research, one of the most important. You also go through some other things we'll get to. But for a landscape company, running keyword research, you get a spreadsheet back and it gives you all the different things that the people are typing into Google search, uh, into the little white box in Google to find landscapers that are in their area. So this happens to be in Jacksonville, Florida, where I am. Um, this was an old client that just needed a website. And so we did the keyword research. And why is this so important uh, to do before you start building your website? Well, oops, went ahead there. When you build out your website the right way, um, you, you take all these keywords and you pop them into an SEO wireframe and you map out each one of your pages. Okay, now that's in the building, in the, um, in the planning phase. So let me just show you why keywords are so important so you get this. Let's type in blue wedding cakes into Google. You don't see advertisements that come up. We're so used to seeing the top three be ads or some ads on the right. You don't see really websites coming up. There's Pinterest, which is all image based. You see Google images coming up. So if I was a bride shopping for blue wedding cake ideas, um, I would look through pictures and let's say I click on this one. Um, ooh, this is really pretty. I might want that. I might click visit the site. So people are actually searching on the internet through images and through videos, not just websites. So when you dial in your keyword research first, you're gonna see how this plays out for all five methods, uh, all five phases in this method, okay? So in the keyword, I have a little cheat sheet here I need to go through. <laughs> in the uh, research phase, we also cover things such as audience research, competitive research, you look at the competition, see what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, any new ideas or new products that the business, you or your clients are coming up with. You do some research on that, um, but we're not gonna get into all that. You, you've heard those terms. Um, when we get into the planning phase, This is an SEO website and your funnels you take each page, okay? So they have a home page, they have a landscaping page, a lighting page, an irrigation page, a contact page even has a focus keyword. And you, based on your keyword, your SEO um, skills, you map out which keyword goes into the landscaping page and which SEO title. That has roughly about 70 characters. This spreadsheet actually calculates it. So when you type, um, let's say we took out Florida, it'll go from being over by three characters, oops, two, three. And that'll say we're dead on. We have 70 characters in there. Okay, I'm gonna hit undo. Um, you go into the SEO description. You plan that out. You use some of your related keywords. There's a, there's a, there's a you know, skill for this. We don't have to get into that. But just so you know that when you do it the right way, you, you choose a keyword for each page, each area of your digital assets. You even go to the image name instead of um, banner 123.ping, which is horrible, or logo, you know, I hate seeing those words. It would be whatever the focus keyword is there. It would be commercial landscaping florida.ping. You'd take out the spaces 
and all your, your images would have keyword names based on what I just showed you, people shopping through images. This is great for car dealerships. This is great for uh, restaurants with a lot of pictures of their food. It's great for any uh, brand that has a ton of images. Um, it's a nice little SEO tweak, but this plays out into much more than just images. In the planning phase, which is, you can see on my toolbar here, I actually have my bookmarks one through five. In the planning phase, we figure out uh, where the audiences are hiding. I call them pawns. You know, are they on Facebook? Are they on Reddit? Are they uh, online and on offline? Are they reading certain books? Um, and we, again, we have spreadsheets for that that really uncovers where the, where the audience is. We went over the SEO wireframe. You also plan out your funnels. Uh, because you're going to need at least, at least a two-step funnel to, to send traffic to, to start building your email list. Um, we map out the editorial calendar and planning. So, you know, so many people sit down at social media and they think, what am I writing today? What am I doing for my Facebook Live? Uh, what is, I, I know I need to write blog posts, but what, what am I going to write? I, you know, pulling content out of your butt just doesn't work. But if you had sat down in the planning phase and mapped out what your content is going to be, it's called an editorial calendar. Every major media outlet has one on their website. Um, and based on keywords, again, so when people are finding your blog post that is about um, commercial landscaping Florida, okay, your title and everything is matchy matchy, then they're going to find your blog post. They're going to follow your next call to action and they're going to get into your email list and you're going to start growing your audience. So I know if people would, if people had this editorial calendar planned out for the year, it would be such a time saver. Um, you also plan out what topics you want to be discussing. Do you want to be interviewed by somebody? Do you have your own podcast topics, your own video topics, um, and your MVP, your minimum viable product for freebies. That's, you know, get my PDF, right? So that's the planning phase. So many people miss uh, the, the research phase, the planning phase, and they jump into the next two uh, phases, which are kind of the fun phases, right? We like to build our website. We like to build our funnel. We like to build things and just jump in without planning. I had an idea. Let's go build it. Uh, we like to do the Facebook Lives, right? That's skipping ahead to phase four, traffic. So in phase three, I guess I could have labeled these. Phase three, this is just my, my brain notes while I was getting ready. ready. Building, um, you actually build the website based on the wireframe, okay? So you've built the website blueprint in a, in a spreadsheet before you ever hand it to a website designer to actually build the, um, the website. You build out the funnel, you build out your freebie, you connect your email provider because if you hear nothing else from this recording, it is about your list. If you want to make online money, you need to own your audience instead of paying Mark Zuckerberg for his traffic and paying for other ads and paying Google and paying some influencer to get in front of their audience. If you own your own traffic, if you own 10,000 people on an email list, you can count on making $10,000 a month in internet money. So most of everything we do on the, on the internet besides brand awareness and besides the obvious of making some sales is to grow that email list over time and own your own audience that you can sell to over and over again. Even if you switch businesses, which we do as entrepreneurs, even if you're, you know, a coach one, one year and then, um, you know, next time you want to be coaching just on holistic stuff, some of that audience will come with you. So if you start a new brand, start a new business, you automatically have some people to sell something to. So you're in a much better position. Okay, and so in the building, you do that, those initial emails, you build out your first few social images, you build out some of your brand images that are going to go into the next step. Uh, you build out some basic bios, you build out some beginning videos, you don't have to do all the things in building, you have to get just enough digital assets. Okay, so now let's pretend we have the perfect website, we have our funnel, we have our email connected, we have the foundation, we're ready to uh, announce to the world that we're open for business. We've built our Facebook page, even though we might not have any likes. We've built our Facebook group, even though we have zero members. Okay, now I, I call this sometimes uh, phase 3.5. It's right in between three and five, three and four. Um, but 3.5 is when you've built the perfect foundation and now you're going to announce it to the Google robots, the Bing robot, robots. You basically just 
sign up for Webmaster, you submit a sitemap, which is a file from your, your website, and you say, come read all my stuff. It's, it's pretty, it's perfect, it's got all the keywords in the right places, the images are named, you're kind of like, hey, pat, pat me on the back, come see my stuff. You get that out there, and then what you do next is you start placing your website, your links, your basic pictures, your basic video, and your offer in a ton of business directories. Um, we have lists of, of thousands of business directories based on topic. So if this client, uh, being a landscaping firm, we punch into our system for the category of landscaping, gardening, you know, all the business directories that are uh, based around their niche. So it's Yelp, it's Google Places or Google My Business now, they keep changing it. Um, and you can get 50, you know, listed in 50 different places pretty quickly in a couple of days, upload some pictures, upload your offer. Now you're spreading your tentacles because we all know what happens when Facebook goes down, right? Everybody freaks out. I had another uh, person who's going to see this video um, contact me today. Hey, rumor has it you have a um, connection at Facebook. And uh, I said, what's going on? Oh, well, this client that just came to me had another agency before that didn't tell them the right things and she was using her personal business manager for Facebook ads and she lost it and got shut down and she's losing her and her business is hurting okay we don't want to put all our assets and all our efforts and all our money in one place so before we've even gotten to right here phase four traffic marketing right before we've even talked about Facebook ads the robots have read our keywords, we have our website, we have our offer, we have things starting to take off, and we've just put ourselves in 50 other places that can bring organic traffic before even worrying about Facebook ads. I can't tell you how many people, sorry my leg's falling asleep, how many people start with the Facebook ads and because that's all they're hearing right now and they forget all this other stuff and they forget to lay that foundation slow and steady kind of quietly it's like the tortoise and the hare right all these these new overnight gurus are like the hare running in circle oh do this do this but the tortoise really wins the race slow and steady so that's the 3.5 um I call 3.5 just because it's it's right in between those phases. It's actually part of, of phase four, I guess you could say, because you're now live on the web. Um, so phase four traffic marketing, this is what most of us are uh, familiar with. Um, you know, the, 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 the social media, the podcasts, the videos, and, and all these things I want to get into in a second. And I just want to show you before I close this up, some people are saying, what is the SEO title and what is the SEO description? Okay. When you build your, your website, you build it for two eyeballs. You build it for the humans, the potential clients that are going to see your stuff, human being eyeballs, and you build it for the robot eyeballs. So let's show you where this stuff shows up. Landscaping page on this website has a title and a description. So I did this neat, neat little trick where I typed in site colon and then the website so you can just see that website's results, right? You don't see all the other clutter, I have to search for it. Okay, and then the landscaping page, which is right here. This is the 70 character title, Commercial Landscaping Florida, right here. We popped that into their website so it shows there. And this is the description right here. I have to update it because the website's, uh, the phone number's cut off. And I might have my font larger on here and it's not showing as much <laughs> since I'm blind. But that's where those show up. So you do, you do mainly the title for the robot eyeballs um, and then you do mainly the SEO description for the uh, human eyeballs so they can really quickly before they even click on this website see what this website or this page is about. So I just want to close this out really quickly. Um, this was the audience targeting week worksheet in phase two planning, you can see, you know, what books are they reading? What, you know, what, who, who are they following? Are they following your competition? So we have, we have a sheet for all, all of that. We'll close this. All right, let's go back to, let's keep that wireframe open. So we're in phase four traffic. Um, again, this is where the fun stuff starts. We do the social media, the podcasts. We know um, based on the planning, right? We planned out 
who are the top 100 people or brands or businesses that we need to align ourselves with or get on their radar or get in front of their audience because they have our ideal client in their audience. We've mapped that out so we know exactly uh, where we're going to be engaging throughout the year. We know what videos we're going to create because the keyword research told us what our topics are going to be for the whole year and we're creating videos for uh, commercial landscaping Florida. So now that YouTube video is titled with this, it has this in the description, it has it when we're talking on camera to the video, we're saying these words. If you're looking for commercial landscaping in Florida, let me give you some tips, blah, blah, blah. And then hopefully the team, uh, the business has a team of people or virtual assistant that, that can take that video and do 10 things with it. They can transcribe it into an article, they can put it out on other video sites, they can make a, you know, a Pinterest infographic. There's so many, it, it goes in uh, an assembly line based on the keywords. Um, when you're posting on Instagram, people say, well, I don't even know what to post. Well, if you had planned it out, based on the keywords, you would know what to post. And then guess what? The hashtags are based on keywords. This is one of my military uh, social media planners. So this is a bunch of military hashtags. And we just have a formula so we can copy paste, put that into the Instagram scheduler, boom. We're gonna be seen everywhere because we've planned this out. Um, let's see what else we have. This is a neat little uh, site. Haro, if people don't know how to get free press, help a reporter, um, help a reporter.com, I believe it is. Uh, Peter Shankman started this years ago and Cision bought it, that's right. Um, so you can sign up for free. I'm a journalist or I'm a source. Now we would all be sources. We all have something to teach or, or talk about our business or sell. And so you sign up as a source and you will get on average 150 queries per day in your inbox from journalists looking to write a story. Some of those stories are on your topics and you can reply and say, oh sure, I'd love to answer those questions. And here's my contact info in case you need anything else. And they will write back and say, we've taken your information. We're gonna publish you in this magazine or this article, or we want you to be on TV. And boom, you've got free press, super easy to do. But you don't do it until phase Four, which is traffic because you want to make sure that when the peep the readers of the magazine or the you know article see Jennifer Goodwin and Internet Girl Friday when they land on Internet Girl Friday there's a call to action hopefully an offer that they can grab from a funnel that builds the email list okay so this is the order of things um, speaking you don't want to go jump into speaking if you haven't built out your foundation because you want to be able to either sell from the stage or if it's uh, more you know less pitchy um, you want to be able to at least say hey you want to get on my list or you want the free copy of what I just showed you on the screen send a text to this phone number and you'll get it right well they're not going to get it if you didn't build it in phase three so I'm ho I hope this is making sense on how to build out the foundation and how the Goodwin method makes sure that your tentacles are spread everywhere instead of just trying this and starting here and following that person. This is the order that, that everything goes in. Um, so just finish up all things online and off. And this does, it doesn't just apply to online. If your business or your client's business needs to be sending out mailers that go into people's mailbox, it should have an offer. It should have something that hooks them into uh, getting on your email list. Well, again, those would have been planned, research planned and built in the building phase. You would have built out the sketches for the postcards to send out um, during the traffic phase. So let's see, you're getting at this point, you're getting your first sales if you're new, um, which means you can spend more on paid ads, but all this before has been organic. Um, you know, you can spend money on ads, you can grow your list even bigger, you can make more sales, you can get into building webinars and make a lot of money. Um, so again, this is, this is the order of things. And then phase five, kind of boring to me, but um, it is and it isn't. I mean, this is where you get to look at your numbers, see what's working, see what's not working. It's reports and analytics. Uh, people that love numbers like, like Sarah, she would, she would geek out over this stuff. And you figure out what's working, what's not, what are some key performance indicators that are showing you, oh, you know, when we did this, our audience did that. And that was really good. So we're going to do more of that. 
Um, and then you rinse and repeat from start to finish with every idea and every business. So I just wanted to get that in your hands. Let me see if there's anything else on my screen to show you. I don't think so. There's always more things I can show you. Uh, I'm glad that you tuned in for this. I just wanted to get this information in your hands. If you're seeing this on um, Facebook Live, great. If you're seeing it anywhere else and there's a button around here to click, do that. And I'll see you soon. Jennifer, out.